a Texas seaport that was destroyed by a blast like an atomic bomb, a doll collection in Calvert, a general store in Grapeland, and a native son who went on to gain fame as we go travel in Texas. The Eyes of Texas. I'm Ron Stone. Special anniversary to mark on the eyes of Texas. It was 40 years ago this month that the worst man-made disaster in American history occurred just down the way. It was a morning much like this 40 years ago, April 16, 1947. A cold front had gone through and had washed the sky clean. The Wilson B. Keene sat right there. A ship called the High Flyer was next to it. And in the slip across the way, was a French ship called the Grand Camp. They had loaded it with ammonium nitrate. At 8.25 in the morning, the fire alarm went off, and the Texas City Fire Department came because the Grand Camp was on fire. But no one worried very much, because after all, it was just fertilizer, and there was nothing to worry about. But at 12 minutes past 9 o'clock on the morning of April 16, 1947, the Grand Camp blew up with the force of an atomic bomb. In a split second, the Grand Camp became a thousand pieces of shrapnel, some the size of trucks, others like baseballs hurled everywhere. They riddled the industries along the waterfront. But the concussion itself did not flatten, the rain of shrapnel smashed, or dented, or set afire. There was smoke everywhere. And all the volatile chemicals and all the oil and gas in the tanks became part of a growing, raging inferno. The giant Monsanto plant just next to the Grand Camp took the brunt of the blow, as did the Texas City Terminal Railway offices that stood nearby. Ada B. May was a young employee of the railway. She stood on the spot where she was 40 years ago and told her story again. And so I sat down at my typewriter and started to work. And then all of a sudden, there was like three rumbles of thunder. And the third one, that's all we remember. That's all, it just, everything collapsed. The building collapsed, and we were unconscious, or semi-conscious. Now, this was 9, 15, 9, yeah, 16 Yeah, 9, 16 morning. How long were you trapped in the rubble? Until uh, 11 o'clock, at least 11 o'clock. And the anchor from the Grand Camp, which is right over here, uh, weighed 3,200 pounds. It came out over our head and went almost two miles and buried in the ground 10 foot. How it's long were you in the hospital? Well, at Parkview Hospital, I was in the hospital a week, and then they released me. I was so anxious to come home to see how many of the, my friends were, were still alive, you know, until uh, I was under the doctor's care for about six weeks. How many people in your office died that morning? Twenty. They were not all in the office. But, but 20 people uh, you worked Yes, with. Uh, 20 people I worked with. Relief came from all over. The highway outside of Texas City was blocked off to keep out the curious. The Red Cross set up cots and gathered most of the nation's supplies of the new wonder drug, penicillin. At McGar's garage, a temporary morgue operated around the clock. As the fires raged, hundreds of dramatic rescues were recorded. Charles Rice remembers that day as if it was yesterday. I was on the Galveston Island in the Old Ball High School building. You were a student in school? Yes, I was a 15-year-old sophomore. 12 or 13 minutes after 9 o'clock, uh, what did you hear? That's correct. We heard rumbling, the building shook. We thought it was an earthquake. And uh, then we ran outside and we thought uh, the school had exploded and kids were jumping out of the windows. And uh, then we looked over at Texas City and we saw this cloud coming up. And remember, this was only a couple of years after the atomic bomb in Japan. And uh, we thought an atomic bomb had fallen on Texas City. Then people started screaming about that. What was it like? What were the people like? 
Well, it was a state of shock. People were, uh, uh, remember it was a very small city of uh, 8,000 people, and almost every family had a, someone involved, either dead or injured. And so there was a lot of chaos, a lot of uh, people, volunteers had come in, uh, doctors, nurses, and, but people were helping people was the main thing. That's a pretty heavy thing for a, for a what, 16 year, 15 year old, year old boy? Then, yes, that's, yes, sir. that's pretty heavy, isn't it? It's a remembrance that stays with me to this day. Friendship uh, reportedly lo loaded with uh, ammonia nitrate. Uh, the mayor isn't satisfied, but he has all the facts at his disposal. As the day gave way to evening, the rumor came that a second ship was afire. And Ben Kaplan was doing a remote broadcast from the docks when the explosion came. Listen. Investigation ordered in New Orleans headquarters is already underway. Uh, he believes that federal authorities will make a complete investigation of uh, the circumstances of the original explosion which set off uh, the disaster. Here comes another explosion. The sky. You have just heard it. We are bending down. The sky is like broad daylight. No one knows what it is from where we are. We have all hit the ground. We are all lying on the ground. It may have been another barge that went up. The sky is still red. We are all hitting the dirt. I hope you can hear me. This is Ben Kaplan, your KPHD news director, with the entire KPHD news staff lying down. Folks are running in the street. Some metal went within 10 feet of us. The high flyer explosion was stronger than the Grand Camp, but the damage was not nearly so bad because there just wasn't much left after the first blast. In the town, the little houses were ruined. Along the waterfront, scenes like a huge barge, the Longhorn II, lifted out of the water and onto dry land by the force of the blast. When it was all said and done, over 600 people were dead, including all the members of the Texas City Volunteer Fire Department, except for one man. And days after the explosion, when the fires were finally out, they buried the remaining pieces of victims who could not be identified. Today, an Italian marble angel stands guard over their final resting place, a monument to one of the worst man-made fires and disasters in American history.